Hello and welcome to this discussant interview at the ABVA Awards 2023. My name is T-Code, a voiceover artist, podcaster, and a creative partner at ABVA. And I'm happy to be the host of this session where we'll be discussing the topic, exploring emerging trends in the African podcasting industry, assessing the current landscape, and unlocking growth potential. As the topic suggests, the purpose of this session is to provide us with a holistic understanding of the African podcasting industry's current state and its potential for growth. Our esteemed guest who will be joining me to dig into this topic is one of the thought leaders in the African podcast space. She's a college professor, a podcaster, social media influencer, content creator, producer, a writer, a media practitioner, the founder and conference organizer of Podfest Cairo, Egypt's first podcasting conference. Ladies and gentlemen, join me as I welcome Kim Fox. Hello, Kim. Whoa, that was amazing. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. it's it's nice to talk to you, Kim. And um, how are you doing today? How is Egypt? I'm doing okay. Uh, I got away from Egypt for the summer because I had a podcast studies conference that I was organizing in Toronto at the end uh, of May. And nice. I ended up staying in Canada. So that's where I am now. Oh, fantastic. And speaking of conference and what have you, I want to say a big congratulations to you on the success of the fourth edition of the PodFest Cairo. That was a great one. Well done. Yes, <laughs> dude, I am. It was so nice. And we are already planning the next PodFest. I got the confirmation on the date, which is March 2nd in wow. Cairo, in downtown Cairo. So I'm already talking to people for uh, being our keynote speaker and doing workshops. So it's the ball is rolling. It's really nice. Awesome. And we look forward to it at ABVA. All right, let's get to today's um, topic. So we're looking at exploring emerging trends in African podcasting industry assessing the current landscape and unlocking growth potential. Well, you agree with me that the African podcast industry has evolved a whole lot over, over the years. I mean, in recent years, we've seen great development, but then there are some factors that have contributed to this growth. So my first question to you, Kim, as we explore the current landscape is, what factors would you say have contributed to the growth of the podcast industry in Africa? And you may also give us a, a brief history about the evolution of the podcast industry in Africa to your current times. Okay. This is a big question. Like we need more time, right? <laughs> Go on. Just, we enjoy you. Exactly. Thank you. So I'm thinking that part of the evolution has come from exposure and the opportunity to kind of see what's going on in the podcasting space in some cases to duplicate it, in some cases to disrupt it, to sort of do our own thing and make it work for us. Uh, meaning what's happening in the Western world as also looking at uh, in that regard. I think I would love to see this African history of podcasts. Like that's something that I think is very deep and like, where is the beginning? Yeah, that's that's not my, uh, my, mm -hmm. my knowledge set at the moment to, to have yeah. all that wealth of information. But but what we know is that mm. Africans were involved with it early on, right? Like that's yeah. just the given. <laughs> it's like yeah. people are like, oh, they're doing radio in Africa. I'm like, come on now. Like we got that, we got that history too. Mm. So it's just a matter of the documentation of the history for that. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna leave it at that because I think we have a lot to dig into as it relates to that topic. All right. All right. So we're still going to go into the question of the factors that contributed to its growth. But right now, let's look into the current state of the podcast industry in Africa. How would you describe it in terms of maturity? Would you say the African podcast space has really matured? And what really excites you the most about its growth potential? I'll answer the last part first. I mean, the potential is there, and that's the point. I think I'm trying to figure out how do we move away from podcasting being so trendy in Africa uh, that I, I don't feel like it's sticking. I don't feel like people are sticking to doing podcasts over a long period of time. Uh, maybe they're jumping in and they're doing that pod fade thing happens where they do a couple of episodes and then it just kind of, kind of falls off for whatever reason. And I think that's because it's a passion project for a lot of people. 
and it's not necessarily a revenue stream for them. Mm. And since they don't see the money, they're just like, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to, you know, there's no commitment to it is, is, is a bigger problem that I see for, for us in Africa. And I see this happening around the world as, as well. We, we see it when we see all these podcasts, you know, that are dumped into these platforms, but people don't stick with it. So that's one thing that I think is, is impacting us and impacts our ability to build in the future. So I mean, is passion about topics that are, are really close to them, that give voice to people. So we need to have more of that and more support for people who are doing that. But can you repeat the first half of the question? I have this short memory and I'm just like, yeah, I missed the first half. I want to get back to that. Part okay. Too. Okay. So the first half of the question is that how would you describe the maturity state of the African podcast yes. industry? Yes. We're still young. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's just not growing at this exponential rate that we saw in the U S and now that we in the U S and in the Western world, I think about the UK and Australia and different places we haven't had that kind of visibility. And I think that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming to show the rest of the world, like, hey, we have great stories here as well. We have great podcasters. We create great quality audio content. So I think our maturity hasn't reached its peak. Uh, that's because, we, you know, Africa is a, a big place. <laughs> it's like there's a lot of pressure on us. Yeah, uh, There's a lot of pressure on us. And a lot of people are doing well. And it's just not getting the exposure because it's sort of reduced to being a very, very small thing mm -hmm. in this big, you know, this vast area of, of podcasters. So, yeah, I don't think our maturity level has has peaked yet. Mm -hmm. But again, the the potential is 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 very much there. Mm. All right. Uh, while you were answering that question, you mentioned something about monetization. Now, this brings me to the topic of the key challenges that we have as podcasters in Africa. This includes monetization, uh, distribution, building a loyal, uh, a loyal farm base, uh, amongst other challenges that we face as podcasters. So from your experience, how would you say we can surmount these problems of monetization, you know, distribution, loyal farm base, and other things that you must have observed in the trend in the African industry and podcast industry? Yeah, I don't think... I think it's not a, and I go back to my disruptor um, comment that I made previously, because I think it comes to a point of what's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the Western podcasters and how they're monetizing, those methods may not work for us. Like if you're trying to do a Patreon, it's like, yeah, it's a great idea. It's not even working well for some people in the Western world. So, or, or or not as well as they thought it would. And so what people end up doing is, is diversifying and layering their monetization efforts. And so we have to look at our communities to say, what's working in our communities? How are people exchanging money? And that's going to be a way for us to kind of look at, well, how can I monetize on that platform? How can I get my content there? I think that's the creativity of it all. It's like, we don't have to do same, same, same. I'm going to put my podcast on YouTube and monetize. Eh, it might work for some. I don't think it's going to be like hugely successful and make you a, a thousandaire, not even a millionaire. It's just like, how much <laughs> are you going to make on YouTube, right? Yeah. And that's why I'm like, yeah, you've got to diversify. But you have to look at these fintech options that are in your community and then say, how can I use that to monetize my podcast? And then you have to really ask, are people going to pay? Is your content worth paying for? Mm -hmm. So in the end, it goes back to what is the quality of your content? And like, why am I going to pay for your content? We have been uh, sort of routinely used to getting things for free. Mm -hmm. So asking me to pay you for something, I'm like, well, I can go and find another free podcast to listen to. So we really need to think about what are we offering people and is it worthy of someone paying for it? And that's where it comes to your point of building that audience. And it's just like, yeah, are we building audiences in this, in this digital world where people have so many choices for what they consume? And it's, it's not easy. Mm. So how would you say we can build audiences, really? Um, you start a podcast what are the things that you think a podcaster should do to ensure that it grows a fan base that are loyal to uh, that podcast? Yeah, that information is certainly 
out there. I mean, there are a couple of methods that you can take. The one that that I think about, and everything has to be done in tandem. It's not just one thing. Mm. But one thing that I am thinking about is like, you know, when I ask the question of who's your audience, do you know definitively who is your audience? Um, there's an approach called design thinking. And design thinking has a component of it. A lot of the entrepreneurs use this approach of design thinking when they're coming up, working on their product and their product launches. And when they're doing a product launch, they need to say, well, who, who's this product for? So a part of the design thinking process says you need to create a prototype of your, your audience, your listener. Mm-hmm. And, and it has to be really specific. So you would have to say, it's a black male between the ages of 18 and 34 who is a, a factory worker or someone who's not in the corporate scene. You know, it's like you get very specific to the point where you will give that person a name hmm. so that when you're doing your podcast, you know that I'm talking to Maurice. Like, you know, is, does Maurice like this content? Is this something that Maurice would want? So digging deep in determining who is your your target audience is going to be key in terms of, again, how do you build a community? Mm. And and then you have to think about, okay, we're pushing out this content. Where is it going? How do we engage the audience? So pushing out content is one thing, but as a listener, at least from my perspective, I want to be involved in the conversation. Like I am having an individual listening experience but I, the, at, at the end of the podcast, I'm like, now I want to talk to someone about this. Like, where's the community for me to engage with either the podcasters or other listeners like me who have some, who want to have some dialogue on the topic. So those are just two ways that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. I'm sure you already know this as well. I'd be curious to know how you think we can build community. <laughs> like, let me, let me interview the interviewer. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned something really um, interesting at the last points that you made when you talked about where you can discuss the things that you listen to in your podcast. And and it's important for us to be intentional about community building. Um, in my podcast, one of the things that I, I started doing recently is I created a Telegram community or a Telegram platform, and I put the link on my show notes. So if you yes. listen to an episode, um, I tell you in the episode that you can join our Telegram community, and then people started joining. And from Every week, I give you an update of um, what we'll be discussing. You know, you can share your thoughts, and then you, we can we can talk about it. So you've been in a strong community. <laughs> That's the point. I love that you've taken to Telegram to do that because I think traditionally people might say, "Oh, I'm going to try to do that on Facebook or somewhere else." Yeah. But I think with Telegram, you've got a little bit more room to, you know, sort of directly respond to someone else's comment. And yeah, and do a, and and post some uh, images and, and and sound and things like yeah. that. So that's that's a great idea. <laughs> Thank you very much. All I'm right. sure it's working well for you too. It is. It is. It is. Yes. It is. And Clubhouse is also a very good space to explore. Yeah, yes. we can have like, or Twitter Spaces when you Twitter can just spaces. jump in. And, yes. Yeah, and I'm thinking of like um a, a monthly you know um community session where we just get to talk. Right, I engage with my listeners. They engage with me and we just have a very fun time together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, can I say something else to build on that? I listen yeah. to a podcast kind of regularly called Fanti, uh, mm. F-A-N-T-I. And what they've done is if you subscribe, then you get access to these additional talks that you're talking about. Mm. And so they would do a Zoom, they would do a Zoom call once a month where you could come in the room with them and have conversations about what they're doing or something that you've heard in one of the previous podcast episodes. So that that is another way to sort of monetize, to get people to say, hey, here's the free content. But on this side, we've got something special for people who are willing to subscribe. Wow, fantastic. I probably will explore that some other time. Uh, by the way, for those that are wondering, if you're curious, my podcast is called Everything Voice of Us Podcast, The African Perspective, where I talk about African um, voiceover artists, our challenges, and the art, the art and the craft of the business. Okay, so let's get back to you now, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we're still talking, of course, about um, the emerging trends in the African podcasting industry, and we're looking at the current landscape and unlocking growth potential. I'm curious to hear what you think about how technology is influencing the content creation process and the distribution platforms within the African podcast industry. So what's your take on this? 
I don't know that we're doing anything unique. I, I know that we're keeping up with what's available and what's out there, uh, even if we don't have access to it. And that might be like high-end equipment or, or studio access. And, and some people do have access to that. Um, mm-hmm. I think people who are doing this on a hobbyist level uh, maybe are just working with hobbyist tools like their phone and uh, whatever computer setups they have. But we know that a good podcast can be done with you know bare bones minimum as well. Uh, if your audio content is halfway decent, and even if it's not, talk about the tools. There are tools that can help you clean it up and make it better. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm thinking about the tools. I was, I'm, I'm working on a podcast episode now, and I've run into some problems with my audio quality. And I've been trying to find the online tools to, to help improve it. And actually, it's, I don't feel like it's improving it. And so it's, I'm kind of stuck <laughs> in, ter- in terms of like, this is not to my standard. So mm-hmm. what am I going to do about it? Mm-hmm. And so this, this is the thing about these, you know, free tools. Uh, are they really helpful for you? Do you have an ear to kind of know what's good? Uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, I, I teach audio production and, you know, I'll get a rookie student who comes in and they're like, they have some bad audio. And they're like, yeah, I ran it through noise reduction. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that that's not how this works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, you think you can push a button and it's better and it's not. So it's not so much about the tool, but, you know, what do you know about the tool that can help you have a better end in, in product? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know that we, we, we have access to anything more. That's mm-hmm. like everyone in the world. I think we have all have access to the same things, but it's the price point that maybe mm-hmm. prevents us from having real access to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and just as you said, access to these things, they may be expensive or probably the recording tools, the studio space and um, things like that. And uh, But I'm sure that as Africans, we keep having or developing new ways to to surmount these problems and you were yes. just very rugged. <laughs> that's how it should be. And I yeah. think that's what I'm looking for from the African community. I'm saying, I'm thinking, If we see what's out there, again, how do we make it relevant for us? Mm. Is that tool something that is beneficial to to African podcasters? And if it's not, then how do we make change? How do we collaborate? How do we make it different, but make it better for for us? And in in that regard, probably make it better for others as well. All right. Now, we're we're almost done with this um, session. Uh, Just two questions I have for you before we leave. The first question is about the current landscape, as we've been speaking about. And uh, this time around, I want us to look at the unique podcasting examples or narratives or genres that have emerged within the African podcast landscape, right? Because there are a lot of genres out there. And from what you've observed, how would you say Africans are playing into the different genres of podcasting and how it is affecting our content creation process? just as we've, you know, earlier discussed. I mean, you might know better than me. I'm, I'm, you know, like when you look at my playlist of podcasts, I'm like, yeah, I have a lot of podcasts, uh, but I don't know that a, a lot of them are African-based podcasts. Mm. I, I know what I have in there. I know what some of my faves are. Um, but someone introduced me to a new podcast and I don't remember the exact name. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid to say it, but I'm going to say it because I'm like, it's a really good podcast. Mm. It's about, it says something in the bedroom is in the, is in the title. Have you heard of this one? Does it ring a bell? If it doesn't, I'm, right, I, I gotta, <laughs> I'm going to have to find the title for okay, you because you, okay. have to, you have to listen to it because okay. I think it, it may have been considered like risque because of mm. the topic. They're, they're talking about sex, mm. but it's just like work. Can you go where people are going to have a conversation about sex in a smart and adult way, but is also entertainment and sort of, you know, kind of, you know, laughs at certain kinds of things to make the topic more engaging. And so I I was just like, I think it's called The Secret Lives of Women in in the African Bedroom. I've seen something like that. I just can't remember right, the right. title. Yeah. But... I'm, I'm going to get my phone and, and, and get the exact title for you in just a okay. moment. And it, it's not for me. It's like, OK, it's not that 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 podcast and its content and format is really different. It's, it's like a chat cast. It's a group of people having a conversation, mm. but it's about the content, the mm. way the content is discussed. 
Mm. And so I think that's what makes it stand out. Yeah. You know, what I'm, I don't, you know, what we're looking for in terms of content varies from listener to listener. And I just want us to be involved in all of those spaces, doing all of those kinds of podcasts. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I agree with you, um, Kim. And I should also include that. Uh, I think the beauty of podcasts right now is not everyone talking about the same thing, you know, talking about entertainment and trends. You can talk about different things in your unique um, industry. For instance, I'm a voiceover artist, so it makes sense for me to talk about voiceovers, have a podcast around voiceovers. You could be um, a lawyer. And I mean, I've seen different podcasts, some about law, you know, about music, yes. about health and different things like that. So so that gives uh, variety and it also helps you to have a, a unique set of um, community or listeners that right. appreciate what you do. And it's just very genuine. I, I, I think that helps the community as well. Yeah. Again, I, I teach podcasting and, and this is what I'm telling my students. Like it's one thing to say, I want to do a podcast about, you know, basketball or, or, you know, whatever the topic is, how are you going to make your content stand out in this sea of other content? Mm. It's just like, there are, there are many podcasts that are out there about this thing. How, the, how is yours going to be unique? So yeah, that is the key. Mm. I did, I did find the name of the podcast. Okay. Can wait. It's called Adventures from the Bedrooms of African Women. Mm, interesting. It's, it, it's a good one. It's a good one. You got to listen to it. So, yeah. You got to listen. All right. Thank you very much, Kim. <laughs> uh, just before you go, what do you foresee as the future of the African podcasting industry and what opportunities do you believe lie ahead? I just feel like we have an opportunity to get involved in all these spaces you know, on that international level so that people know the wealth of content that, that we're producing, uh, the quality of the content that we're producing. So yeah, I want to see us on those, those stages at these major conferences, you know, any of these major platforms getting that recognition uh, and, and it's possible. And so, and, and not so that it's just like, oh, here are your African podcasters. No, I want us just in the mix and just there. And not singled out as being an African podcaster. Just like this is what I do, and I'm at the top of my game. So I I want I want and I see us having that kind of success and that kind of recognition. Great, thank you so much, Kim Fox. It's been a pleasure hosting you on this discussant interview session at the Abba Award 2023. And, and, and can I say, can I say thank you? Because I, I was in the mix last year for winning and I, I was a nominee. And oh, I, wow. was, I was so excited. It was just like just being a nominee. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes. Like yeah. my little pot, my little podcast did that. So it's exciting. Absolutely excited. And uh, I look forward, we look forward to uh, PodFest Cairo 2024. Yeah. Yes. All right, then. Thank you so much. My name is Tolukolade. You call me T-Code. And it's been my pleasure hosting this session. And let's get back to the rest of the Abba Awards 2023.